If you've ever climbed Mount Washington or attempting to climb Mount Washington in the winter, there's a few things that you should know. This is a video to help you with one thing and one thing only, and that's how to protect your beautiful face from the wind in harsh weather. Picture the coldest day of your life that you've ever experienced. Now picture the greatest wind that you ever experienced. Now elevate both of those and mix them together and you've got Mount Washington. The Lion Head Winter Route is the most well-traveled winter climb on the mountain. It's pretty much the route that everyone takes to get to the summit of Mount Washington in a day. The hardest part of making a winter ascent of Mount Washington is not the technical difficulties on the trail. <clears throat> More so, it's dealing with the harsh weather, the combination of really cold temperatures and really high winds. And when they combine and hit you right in the face, you know it pretty quickly. You're gonna feel this like, sort of like biting sensation right on your face. Your skin starting to freeze. It's amazing. You can get up above tree line and in a matter of seconds feel that biting like frost nip right on your face. And if you don't cover it up immediately, you'll get frost nip and that will turn into frostbite within minutes. The challenge that most people are faced with is their goggle face mask combination does not fit their face properly. In fact, what happens more than likely is the face mask goes underneath the goggles, so there's an overlap, and as you're walking up the trail and your head's sort of down slightly looking at your feet, your breath is going to go up through the mask into your goggles. That moisture will immediately freeze and then you can't see anywhere you're going. This video is gonna help you prevent the freeze up from happening in the first place, which is going to increase the likelihood of you successfully summiting Mount Washington. Face gear for above tree line travel includes two goggles, sunglasses, a buff, and an outdoor research three quarter face mask. I highly recommend using the same items or something close to it. I'm wearing a Patagonia onesie with an integrated hood. I prefer this over a hat, it's less bulk. If you're going above tree line and there's less wind and cold mixed, you can wear a buff. And if you wear sunglasses, you still have plenty of face protection as well as the hood. The hood and hoodie underneath are just enough to keep you warm. Instead of breathing through a buff, which can be a challenge to get good inhalation exhalations, you can actually make a snip with a pair of scissors and that'll improve your breath. You won't get as much moisture on your sunglasses to you know, fog them up. Now it's time to prepare for the coldest of days above tree line. You can tuck that buff down below your chin and put on the Outdoor Research three-quarter face mask. You'll notice that I have plenty of room to breathe out of my nose and my mouth. The fabric uh, is actually sort of a mesh on the face. When I put my goggles over the top, I wanna be sure that I'm pulling the face mask down enough so that there's no overlap with the goggles over the mask. I'll put on my warm jacket utilizing the hood in case everything. As you can see with this setup, there's no skin showing whatsoever. Your entire face is fully protected. You'll also notice that it's easy for me to breathe out of my mouth and my nose. So let's go ahead and recap some of the things that we talked about today. So we want five items. We want two goggles, sunglasses, a buff, and an OR three-quarter face mask. I prefer this face mask specifically because of the contour it has right here over the nose and cheeks. It tends to fit really well with most goggles. Now, if your face mask is gonna be underneath the goggles, 
you're gonna have difficulties with moisture buildup, which turns to freezing ice on the inner layer of your goggles. So that's the main thing that we wanna prevent. So if you have a good goggle face mask set up on your face that you've sort of looked in the mirror and, and played around with, the next step is to do the pursed lip breathing. So as I'm turned like this, I'm hiking uphill, okay? And usually as I'm doing that, I'm looking down at my feet upon the inhalation. But as I exhale, I'm gonna lift my head up, looking at where I'm going, and I'm going to breathe out through my mouth only, okay? So it's gonna look like this. As that exhalation goes as like a stream outward, it's not rising up into your goggles. So it's basically a redundancy built into already having a solid face mask goggle setup. When to incorporate this face mask goggle system is completely up to you. It really depends on what's going on with the weather and the conditions and good judgment. Typically what I do if it's really cold outside, really windy, I'll put this gear on right at, uh, at tree line. You'll notice that you're coming really out of a forest. The trees are getting shorter, a little smaller, and you'll just hear and feel the wind. That's when you wanna kinda hold up, get out that extra gear, put it on, and continue on. Now, the extra goggles is basically just backup. You know, lo and behold, you get up there and some moisture gets in your goggles and you need to replace them. So having a backup is really nice. Make sure when you're not wearing your goggles directly on your face, they're not up here on your head because your heat is gonna put moisture into the goggles, they'll freeze, okay? If you're not wearing goggles, store them in their pouch, put them inside your backpack away from the elements. Any more questions in regards to this equipment and how to utilize it properly, feel free to reach out to me at northernvertical.com. This is Ryan Howes with Northern Vertical. Take care.